Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming to tonight's study session for the city of Casa Grande, Arizona. And tonight, we're going to have a report on our auditor's report, so a report about the report. So, Scott, are you doing that, or Larry, are you going to introduce it? Oh, I, sorry, didn't mean Scott, sorry, and Joe. <laughs> My bad. May and Council, good evening. It is my pleasure this evening to present to you Brian Hemley, did I say it right? From the um, auditing firm Henry and Horn. They are responsible for issuing our audit reports to you this, this evening for fiscal year 2021. When he's wrapped up, I will come back and take a few minutes of your time to introduce the staff that has come along with, that have come along with me. Thank you, Angel. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Angel. Is it okay if I remove my, my mask? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Go. We'll do this. Okay, Mr. Mayor, members of council, again, my name is Brian Hemmerly. I'm the lead audit partner on your audit this year, and I'm here to present the audit. Some of you may remember me from last year. Uh, we'll, we'll get right into this here. I don't have a very long presentation, so we'll have some time for questions if you have any uh, at the end. There's a couple required uh, things that I need to make sure I communicate with the governance of the city. Uh, first off, what is our audit? Um, not just what statute requires that the cities and towns in the state get, uh, but what we also do from generally accepted accounting principles and generally accepted auditing standards. Uh, we do a we do look at all your financial statements, which I have here. You should have received a copy of that uh, as a PDF. Hopefully you had a moment to read through that. Uh, we do look at your internal controls. We observe those internal controls. We test some of those internal controls and we provide recommendations based on those, the internal controls that we, we look at. We provide reasonable assurance that the financial statements are materially correct. We don't provide absolute assurance. You might remember me telling you this last year. Uh, the difference between the two is uh, absolute assurance would imply or would indicate that we've tested every transaction at the city. Reasonable assurance, we do statistical sampling uh, and then we project any misstatements we find and we'll report those out to all of you. Uh, note one of your CAFR, your comprehensive annual financial report, is where you will see all your uh, significant accounting policies and procedures. There really was no change to that this year. We had no difficulties encountered during our audit and when performing that audit. No uncorrected misstatements that we are uh, reporting out. No disagreements with management this year and we are not aware of any outside consultation with uh, other CPA firms. So this year, you received an unmodified opinion. Uh, that essentially means that you have a clean opinion. And now you have two reports here. You've got your one on the CAFR, and then you have one that's for grants, single audit related federal type of things. So when you spend over $750,000 in federal money, you receive a separate report for that. Uh, we'll go into that in just a moment, but uh, just to let you know, you also received a unmodified opinion on that as well. So clean, clean reports on, on both. Uh, we look at your internal controls on compliance with grants, contracts, laws, regulations, debt covenants, and we had no findings related to that either. So you had an uh, unmodified opinion related to that. This year, we had no significant deficiencies. We had three material weaknesses. Of the three, there was only one new one. Two of them were repeat findings from previous year audits that had not yet been corrected. The material weakness for this year was the prior, it was a prior period adjustment. It only affected your fund statements, your general fund. It's related to retainage as payable. Uh, essentially what happened usually in a retainage payable, some of you probably already know this, you'll, the city will hold back roughly 10%, we'll say, of a construction project, and then they'll pay it out when you take ownership of the, the construction. For this particular contract, there was one in which the contractor set aside money or assets into a trust an irrevocable trust. The city had to sign off releasing those assets when the uh, project was finished, uh, and then the contractor gets their money, their assets back. So in that particular situation, there was no 10% holdback, but we had reported in the prior year a retainage payable, sort of like a liability, and it shouldn't have been there, so we had to restate that payable in the current year financial statements. Yes, sir. I have a question. When you find something like that, uh, do you identify whether it was a, uh, 
a, a policy and procedure error or if it was just a human error that it didn't get posted properly? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, members of council, um, uh, thank you for the question. Usually, uh, these types of things will end up being internal control issues. In this particular instance, I do believe it was a um, isolated event. Usually what you'll see is on the pay apps from the contractors, it'll tell you what the retainage payable or the holdback will be. And for the most part, there is one there. But this year, or I'm sorry, for that particular contract, there wasn't one there. And I will admit, it wasn't just the city finance department that missed it, we as auditors also missed it because we reviewed the contract ourselves and we didn't see it either. So it's, it's a prior period adjustment, not just on the city, but on us as well because uh, we all missed it. So it, it is sort of a, just an error, human error, in okay. this particular instance. Um, I don't think there is a particular internal control that would strengthen that other than just paying closer attention to those pay apps for okay. those contract payments. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, the second material weakness here is a repeat from last year. It's uh, the sixth material weakness we had last year, valuation of utility judgments receivable. Um, Angel and her team have done an excellent job in going through last year's report and all the findings and trying to remedy as many as possible. This is one that just hadn't quite gotten there yet and essentially what it is is the listing of judgments receivable for your utilities is greater than what's on the general ledger. Instead of booking the difference to increase your assets and potentially overstate the assets, we've decided to leave the general ledger alone at where it's at and they're gonna spend the time this year reconciling to that sub-ledger to make sure they can fix the, the differences between the detail and the actual on the general ledger. So that, that is still um, in process to be corrected in the current year with Angel and her team. And then 2018-001, this is really just a repeat finding because of the number of entries we had to help book along with finance to make sure the books were closed. This is a cutoff issue as far as accrual-based accounting, which which year should revenues and expenses be in? Should it be in 2020? Should it be in 2021 or, or vice versa? Um, and that one is also a repeat for something they're trying to, to finish. And if, if you remember last year, we issued and reported out to you in June of 2020, and then your, your end was June 30. So there really wasn't much time for finance to make some of these corrections. And so a lot of that is the reason for the repeat finding. This is a nice slide. I like giving good news. These are all the material weaknesses the city had last year that have been corrected this year. So um, it's a very good thing to see 2019-1 through 9, <coughs> aside from number 6 that I already reported on, have all been corrected. If you have any questions on these, I'd be happy to go through them. Um, but that's that list from last year. We did have a couple other um, small recommendations. These are just uh, informal written ones to management. First one is formal review, and this is just a look again at trying to make sure that there's a review process for reconciliations um, at year end to make sure the balance sheet, I'm sorry, the, the general ledger matches the sub-ledgers. Um, so there were a few instances where they did not match. And then the payroll, you may remember there was a number of bank reconciliation issues last year. All of the bank accounts have been properly reconciled this year, which is, is a very big deal, so that's good. Uh, payroll bank account did get reconciled, but it was a little untimely as far as when it got reconciled. So it's not a material weakness, it's not a significant deficiency, but it is something we wanted to uh, bring your attention to. And uh, my understanding is fully reconciled now. Your federal single audit, you received $8 million in federal funds this year. The major program we tested for the federal government was the COVID-19 Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security Act, the CARES Act. That probably will be your major program this year, this coming year as well. There's a lot of money out there from the feds, and that tends to be what everyone is having. Every city is getting tested on that. Um, you did receive an unmodified opinion on that federal single audit, so no findings on that and a clean opinion. Your expenditure limitation report goes to the Auditor General's office this year. Uh, your limit was $229 million, according to the Economic Estimates Commission put out by the state. Uh, the amount subject to that limit was only $57 million that the city had spent, so you're well underneath your, your limitation there. And then your ADEQ, Municipal Solid Waste Landfill Compliance Report, is another AUP, agreed upon procedure report that we do. We had no exceptions reported in that report either. So that is my brief presentation. If there aren't any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Mr. Bell? That's a great question. How are the limitations set on, on what we're looking at here? On the expenditure limitation report, sir? What's that? The expenditure, expenditure limitations? 
Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, usually most cities will you have budget based. In your particular instance, yours is um, based on the Economics Estimate Commission, which is a commission that the state has put together to determine the um, the the amount that each city can use. If you pass, I think it's the home rule usually, yeah, permanent base adjustment, uh, then it would go to your budget. In this case, your city's so far underneath what the state requires that there's really no need for that, so. Thank you. And just go into a little more depth for the council. You may recall that for uh, years, the city of Casa Grande was under the home rule option, which essentially would allow the city to use, utilize our budget as our expenditure limitation for a four year period. But each four years, every four years would be back before the voters uh, to ultimately ask their approval to continue that methodology. I'd say about a decade, maybe 15 years ago, um, the city elected to pursue the permanent base adjustment where we could project what our expenditures were going to be, which is him, Mr. Himmerl has outlined um, essentially uh, eliminates us from having to have an election every four years and, and gives us what I would consider to be some flexibility. You're, it's still obviously tied back to our budget, but uh, it's a different equation that's utilized in these permanent base adjustments. Thank you. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Lisa. It's really more of a comment. Um, I just know that I just appreciate you giving you know our finance department the feedback and making sure that we've um, addressed the issues from last year. And, and Angel, I just appreciate you and all your staff. Um, I know you came in with a lot of challenges, and um, your your team has really worked hard to get us here. And of course, there's a couple findings, but um, sounds like it's something that we're going to be on top of and be able to work through this year. So thank you to, to both of you guys, or all of you Absolutely. on the team. <laughs> Absolutely. Anybody else? OK, thank you very much. Thank you. And, and just one last comment. I, I do think it's moving in the right direction. We're very thankful that things went much, well, much better this year. So thank you for having me, and thank you for having our firm again this year. And I hope to see you again soon. All right. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thanks for bringing good news to us. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council, I could not have done it alone. I want to thank you for the opportunity to serve the city. It was rough. We had to deconstruct and reconstruct the general ledger. My aim, as you may recall on one of my responses to your interview question, was to eliminate the audit findings. I did my best. Um, unfortunately, I could not do all of them because it was so much to take care of in so, such little time, and we wanted to be certain that we were able to meet the deadline for the, um, the state in presenting the financial report to the state. And so at this point, I want to introduce the staff who decided to come along this evening um, to sit in on this, on this uh, study session. Um, with me, I have Jackie Martinez, who is our accounting manager. I pulled her with me from Maracopa. And I have <laughs> and I have Ellen Rafidi, who came in as our accountant and now serves as our senior accountant. I pulled her. She was a temp for me, great worker, and so I pulled her into Casa Grande. Um, Ellen was responsible for reconciling the bank account, and she reconciled it to the dollar. Um, it took her about six months to do so. We did not need a, an auditing firm to come in like you did uh, last year. We did it all by ourselves, and I think our staff did a, a wonderful job. I also want to thank those who are not with us this evening for the work they've put into it, and I'm looking forward to serving you for a few more years. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Angel. And thank you to your staff as well. Thank you very much. Sounds like a little better report than last year. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions, comments on this subject? All right, hearing none, then we will adjourn until 7 o'clock. <laughs>